Hi Alison. I saw your video and I found it tremendously affecting and I also found it very familiar. Um, there's this funny thing sometimes on YouTube or social media or, or wherever else where similar things happen at the same time. Synchronicity, some people call it. It's just really coincidence, but you know. And a lot of people seem to be feeling discouraged as we as we move into the autumn. That's certainly true from what I saw of you, but also a lot of YouTubers, particularly in the atheist uh, slash skeptic sphere, seem to be feeling very discouraged. And look, I I understand where you're coming from in particular. You've got principles, you stood up for them, you fought for them, you, you've battled on the basis of those principles. And what has it got you? <laughs> Not very much, really, has it? You, you took a stand, you were a good person, you did the right principled thing, and the world took a shit on you from a great height. And you know, the, the same thing has happened to me. When I start feeling bad about that, which I do, I mean, nobody's immune to that much hatred and vitriol poured towards you, deserved or otherwise. What I take comfort in is that fact that I am principled, um, that I am secure in what I believe. I know why I believe it. I know why I think it's right that I can make those arguments to people. And I ask myself one simple question. Could I live with myself if I hadn't made a stand? If I hadn't done the right thing? And in that context, when I look back on things that have happened, and I know that I did do the right thing, and I know how bad I would feel, how it would eat me up inside if I hadn't done the right thing, yeah, that makes it better. You know, despite all the difficulties and the and the problems and and everything else, you know, that's what makes me understand and recenter myself. You know, I get accused sometimes of being distant or unempathetic or unemotional, but that's not it with me. And I think maybe it might be similar with you because when the emotions do come pouring out of you, as, as they did in that last video, you know, it's, it's clear that you feel things very deeply and I am the same way, but that's why perversely I can seem distant to people because the way I protect myself, the way I process uh, my emotions and my entanglements and everything, uh, th the way that I have coped with my depression and suicidal feelings is to distance myself from them, to intellectualize them, to reason through them, to subject them to rational <laughs> rationality, to, to rational examination. And that's been helpful too. But none of this solves your problem. You had a ruling that went against you despite all appearances to the contrary. It's understandable why you might not want to appeal because it's just you know, another year at least of wrangling with no guarantee uh, at the far side. There are issues, there are problems around all this, but I don't think anyone would blame you for giving up at this point. I know people say hurtful things. They call you guys the money badgers. I don't think that's correct at all. I mean, I'm not really a men's rights activist. <laughs> I, there's things I don't agree with you guys on, but I recognize your heart and your humanity, how much you care, how much good you do. And that means a lot to me. I'm sure it means a lot to a lot of other guys who often feel that they're silenced or ignored by society as a whole. So the other thing I'd say is just don't doubt that you're making a difference. 
because you are. It just might not be a loud difference. There's plenty of people, myself included, who draw strength from the fact that we know that there are people out there who loudly care for us. Now, I'm, I'm a creative person as well. I, I write books. And whenever you make anything, you're opening a raw wound to the public for people to judge you. You're putting out a part of your soul. And when it merely doesn't succeed, <laughs> that can be hurtful. You know, the only way to grow calluses is to keep doing it. You've got a lot of product stuck up in your delightfully Canadian attic. Uh, I've never seen so much insul insulation. <laughs> um, I have my own boxes of stuff. There's some here underneath. There's, this is my novel I wrote. Um, pretty much everyone who has read it thinks it's it's brilliant. I'm not bigging myself up by saying that. Could I get an agent? Could I get a publisher interested? No. Not at all. Do I sell a lot of them? No, not at all. But I'm still damn proud that I put it together and I, and I put it out. You know, I freelanced on a lot of other people's work. I've put out my own books, my own gaming books of all kinds. And I've got boxes and boxes of them too. And a bunch of secondhand stuff I wanted to get rid of and boxes and boxes of old 2000 AD comics that I want to sell off. Can I get rid of them? No. Why? I'm not barred from conventions, but between social anxiety and increasingly draconian rules about who can sell at conventions, how they can sell, what kinds of products they can sell and so forth, and the sheer amount of people that hate me, I still have no real idea why. At least you know why. You know, that's, that's a good thing in a weird way. Uh, I haven't felt able to go to conventions. The one where I felt still felt welcome and, and valued stopped. And it's a lot of organisation. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of mental effort to go to these things. And yeah, I guess it's conceding to them that they've won if they've essentially barred me from a convention from all conventions, pretty much, without even having to. Because I don't feel safe going to them, um, emotionally or physically, given what's happened to, to some people. So I feel that, that pain as well. And I've had people refuse to work with me on collaborative work, on collections of stories. It's... Uh, it's tough. See, for me personally, I can and do separate the person from the work for the most part, unless they've done something really, really personally hurtful to me. And yet that same consideration is not extended to me, just as it's not extended to you. But you can take some heart in that... Um, by having these principles and by making this separation, uh, <laughs> uh, you can Anna Kasparian them. I'm better than you, <laughs> and it's it's true uh, to a degree. You defended one of your attackers. I try to be fair to my critics and so on. It's not always easy, but just making the effort puts you ahead of the game. And that's the other thing I want to say kind of more generally to a lot of people who are feeling discouraged in their creativity, whether it be YouTube or writing or whatever else. Did you get into this for the money? Or did you do it because you just had to? You have to make something. You have to tell a story. You have to draw a picture. You have to make a comic. Whatever else. And you rediscover that, that love of it. And even if the other things never quite meet your expectations, that makes up for a lot. So that's, that's what I'd say. Just keep plugging away. I'm coming up on a thousand videos. Uh, everyone says I'm woefully undersubscribed. 
but you know it, we we work on a basis of shifting sand and the only continuity the only constant we can have is being true to ourselves regardless of algorithms and search suppression and everything else so to everybody just keep plugging away and to everybody else support people you care about who make things that you love it is a desperately horrible <laughs> economy and world for people who are trying to make things especially if they have principles if they make a stand if they refuse to go along just because of pressure so i need your support allison needs your support everyone needs your support logic to everybody and the best thing you can do is to chip in help them out or buy something that they've done because it is a horrible feeling having boxes and boxes of your creative output just lying around. It's like a weight that's constantly there in the back of your mind. So what I did was I wanted to support Alison, but I didn't just want to throw money at her. And I used to read her webcomic. I don't know why it fell by the wayside. I kind of stopped reading all webcomics. So I went to Feed the Badger and I bought two copies of her book. That way there'll be a little bit less weight in her attic constantly pressing down on her and she'll have a little bit of money for the for the war chest and um, if you can do that or something like that i'm sure you'll be helping her out and a lot of other people out zang i didn't want to hurt you baby i didn't want to hurt you i didn't want to hurt you but you're pretty when you cry See, I, I, I don't like the, I, I have, okay, like a lot of you, I hate a lot, you know? <laughs> but I hate with style and creativity. <laughs> yeah!